call this meeting of the Veterans Affairs Committee of the United States Senate to order. And thank everybody for their attendance today, particularly Sec Secretary Shulkin. Thank you for being here today. And Yahia, thank you, Dr. Yahia, for being here today. And thanks to all our VSOs who are here who will be on the second panel. I know sometimes waiting through the first panel for the second panel takes a long time, and sometimes there are not as many members of the Senate here. When you get to testify is when the big guy gets to testify, but believe me, we pay close attention to every bit of testimony that comes in. We appreciate your participation because we're, we're, we consider ourselves a team from a standpoint of the Veterans Administration. And in my opening remarks, I want to focus on that for just a second. I don't think there's any question that the fact that David Shulkin was confirmed 100 to nothing or 99 to nothing, first, first <laughs> presidential appointee that was unanimously Yesterday, we had a voice vote passage of a bill we could not move in the United States Senate a year ago, which is a unanimous vote as far as I'm concerned. And we did so because we found common ground where we needed to. We plowed new ground where we had to. But most importantly, we kept the veterans foremost in our mind, not ourselves as politicians or the press or somebody who wanted to play, play, play games. What we're going to talk about today is probably the most challenging subject we will deal with uh, in this term of Congress as far as Veterans Administration is concerned. Accountability had its pitfalls and had its potholes, but it was doable and we proved it was doable. And I want to thank the ranking member, John Tester, for his leadership in helping us get that through. And not to least Jerry Moran also, who was a tremendous help on our side. And Marco Rubio who's not on the committee, but was a very active member who promoted accountability from the beginning. And we finally got it done. Today we're going to be talking about the Veterans Choice issue. I was here in August of 2004 when we started the great Veterans Choice debate. I was on the conference committee when we did the final bill that we passed, and finally the decision to pass what we finally passed, we capitated in terms of available funding to at some point it would die unless we fixed it. Well, we're at the point where if we don't fix it for a permanent and permanently, we're going to have a program that's going to be out of money, out of gas, or out of both. And we also have learned a lot in the last 27 months about how the choice program has worked as the way we designed it. And we know there's some things we need to change. We know we have to look at the 40 mile rule and the 30, 30 day rule and make them better rules for the veteran and for the veterans administration and make, make them something that works for choice rather than an incumbent to choice. We need to see to it that the VA for all intents and purposes is unleashed to provide highest quality service it can and make the decisions it makes it easy to make on the ground at the time they need to make them. We need to give them the funding and the commitment and the resources to be able to do that. But on the same token, I think we have to be as open-minded on making choice work in the future as we have been on finally getting accountability done yesterday. There are going to be some things that some people are going to find hard to take or hard to talk about. You know, people think thinking change is bad. Change is not bad. Change is good. And what we're going to have to do on choice is change some. We have to change some ideas, change some direction, and change some results. But in the end, remember, our goal is to see to it that veterans have the choice to get the services they need, whether it's care in the community or in the VA hospital or in the clinic, in a timely basis, that the VA can run its health care system the way it sees fit to meet the demands of those veterans and deliver them the highest quality service possible. Dr. Shulkin yesterday demonstrated that he had the acumen, the intellect, and the intestinal fortitude to make the kind of decision you have to make to really bring a system into the 21st century. Yesterday's decision in terms of Cerner and bringing in the medical records was huge. I've been personally very pleased at the response of, of the president, of elected officials, of members of Congress, and of many people in the industry, because that is a giant leap forward where our, our software will be interoperable between the DOD and the Veterans Administration where veterans won't fall through a hole once they leave active duty to go into the Veterans Administration and be lost for a year before we finally find them. I think we'll ultimately realize savings, innovation, and advancement. And we are going to be sure that we hold Cerner accountable and the Veterans Administration accountable for those to be the results of this decision. But I want to publicly commend Secretary Shulkin on having the fortitude to do that pulling that trigger, so to speak, and pledge my support to help in every way possible to see the transition as smooth and works. With that said, I welcome Dr. Shulkin here today. Dr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I welcome you here today because I know you're the real brains behind these, a lot of these recommendations. I'm not going to take the heat off of Dr. Shulkin. I'm going to put a summit on your back as well. 
And I want to thank the ranking member for being such a good partner in this effort and turn to him for his opening statement.